uh, as you did a house. Yeah. So similarly when uh, later on when I uh, were looking to get married at 20, um, the natural thing to do was put your name down for a house. Mm. In earlier years, they were very rigid that you had to be married first. Really? Um, at my time, in 72, they were looking at, uh, you could put your name down once you'd got a date for your wedding. Oh, really? So it, it gave you a little bit of time to do something with house, you know. Um, and then when you got to the top of the list, you got offered an house. Um, it, it changed somewhat because it was very strict at one time for obvious reasons. The house went with the job, so if you left the pit, you had to come out of the house. Um, that relieved quite a lot, uh, or relaxed. Um, and then there was, a, in the 60s again, there was a big transition of pit closures in the northeast. Um, and miners transferring down to pits like Rosington and large estates being built, which yeah. uh, were always called the Wimpy Estate, um, which were put up very quickly. There were concrete poured houses with pebble dash on and so on, and they've had a lot of uh, improvements since. But um, And a club were built as well um, near that estate, particularly for people that. Uh, Actually, I said North East, it was Scotland as well. Mm. So there were a lot of influx of people from Scotland and North East that, uh, that come from mining areas uh, that were offered this opportunity of coming to pits like Rosington that were uh, deemed as long life pits. Mm. Um, and uh, it were a change again, you know, but that was because there weren't enough houses then. Yeah. And because they probably relaxed the other one of. Uh, if you didn't work at pit, well, uh, you don't have to get out anymore. That's quite tough though for a mining company. Yeah. I suppose I didn't. I suppose at that time, then the house didn't go with a job after a while. No, it didn't. No. Yeah, no, I, it, too, it went all together actually because yeah. they had a. Um, I'm trying to think, I ran about seventy-six, I think it were. They made a decision to sell the lot. Yeah. And. Uh, as the tenant, you were always given, you were all given the first opportunity of purchasing them. Even if you'd no sort of inkling of buying a an house, yeah. you needed to seriously think about it because where were it going to finish up? And uh, you could get absent buyers type of thing, absent landlords as it's classed as, that could buy an old street, for example, and uh, then never really do any repairs wherever. Yeah. The repairs that they used to do from the yard, as they used to call them, you just have to put a letter in asking them to come and mend some unless it were an emergency, you know, and it were getting less and less. The painting weren't happening as it used to do. Uh, they used to like religiously go through the village over a, a five year cycle or whatever. That had gone. So paint were peeling, windows weren't getting replaced. On houses that were uh, probably built from, uh, as the pit was sink being sunk in, sort of. Uh, 1913-15 period that the first thing. houses were starting to go up as well. Massive uh, enterprise. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, our village, though it was a regional village and a lot of it were part of the Rosington Hall estate and the farms and so on, um, it were really when you went to the other side of East Coast Main Line where the pit were going to be sunk that then a new village was built purely to house the uh, the miners that were going to work at the pit. And again, uh, you know, so there wasn't ready-made miners at that time. They travelled in from various parts of the country, yeah. so you've got, you got like, miners from Lancashire, you've got miners from Wales, you've got miners from North East, you've got miners from Scotland, all sort of coming together into a new village. Mm. And the housing were a very important thing in them days. Um, a job with a house, you know. Mm. Uh, although it was a very powerful weapon then if uh, if you got a sack as well, yeah. it? <laughs> that you were straight out at house, you know. Um, I have seen some of them tenancy agreements and they were very clear yeah. that you would be out by seven days, you know, if you no longer worked at the uh, colliery. Oh. Um, yeah, so that, that was another massive transformation of selling all the pit houses. So I did buy mine, uh, a lot of people did. Um, 
fortunately in, in Doncaster the council took the rest on so um, they didn't get that situation which a lot of other villages finished up with absent uh, London yeah. landlords if you like that were just buying housing stock up no real intention of doing anything mm. with them other than collecting rent and not actually improving them you know because a lot of them hadn't got uh, toilets the, the, well they got some had external toilets on and the kitchen if you like outside um, certainly very few had a, a toilet and bathroom upstairs mm. um, mine were a four bedroom house and it had a downstairs toilet uh, they were actually outside back door and then it had a, a bathroom uh, that when you opened the door, door hit the bath <laughs> probably because it were a bit too wide like I don't know and then sink at front of it and that were it and that side of it were a pantry um, obviously as when we bought our house later on then there was a thing called home improvement grants around yeah. um, where you could get major things um, through government support like new roofing uh, rewiring uh, windows doors that type of thing so we had a lot of people access that and uh, so made improvements to their houses and changed them about we, we reduced the bedroom and made a bathroom and toilet upstairs and opened the kitchen up um, and put a new window in the back so that we've got a larger kitchen with a dining area, you know. So we made it work for us, in effect, yeah. you know. Um, but that for, I always remember it, we, uh, and you look back now and you think, but um, when we first took that house in 1972, the rent was deducted off your wages, um, and it was £1.21, inclusive of water rates and rates, as it were in them days. I think we're only on about 15 quid a week like but <laughs> you know but that off your wages were great yeah you know when you think um, so they were a very important thing and, and people never a lot of people didn't particularly have aspirations of buying houses you know they, yeah. it scared them you know with, yeah responsibility if you'd not sort of been into that type of thing you know um, you'd just been in rented housing it's probably similar to people coming council housing now you yeah. know that no an aspiration to buy them until, again, the rules change for council houses. Um, and of course all the best stock go, don't they? Mm. You know. Uh, a lot of the housing that were, the council took over, the, the council access grant funding to, uh, to do a lot of major improvements. Uh, funding, external funding, European Union, I believe, yeah, yeah. Uh, funding to, to improve housing either European Union or government funding to uh, to do tranches of houses, you know, and bring them up to modern day standards. Mm. Um, so a lot of good things happened with housing. As I say, that didn't, it weren't mirrored in every mining village throughout the country. It were, Doncaster had a, a strong bond to it and recognised where it was. Yeah. You know, eight villages plus around the area that had all been essentially mining and then all at once the gathered all this housing stock and uh, that weren't in best of repair yeah. you know, and all required improvement so it were a, I think it were well done by Doncaster mm. yeah. saw a lot of programs after where it didn't happen like there in um, particular one village Creswell I think it were in Derbyshire uh, where the, again they, were, they got people buying houses up and next minute rents were going up without getting repairs done and so on so they were getting into disputes and whatever you know um, so i think there were a lot of sort of comfort that doncaster council had taken the yeah. houses over really commendable uh, isn't rather it? than you know because again you weren't used to that type of thing you knew all your land were landlord were before whether it were ncb or whether it were council you know um and you knew where to report to get repairs done and whatever yeah. Um, and obviously if they didn't get done you know where to go at the next step you know yeah. But, uh, yeah so it made a change when you think so once you got rid of the housing stock you'd lost the attraction of uh, houseware job 
yeah. or a job with an house, <laughs> yeah. uh, of enticing people into industry. Because it were always a, a big turnover um, from when I started, because there were a lot of other industry around Doncaster the, um, that has all disappeared as well now, mm. I may add, but uh, you know, there were a lot of choice and people would flit in and out at bit because they knew they could go back. Um, they might even go on building sites in summer. Yeah. You know, and then go back in winter. I was amazed at how um, kind of open the job was, really. Yeah, I mean, you used to see it all the time in, uh, in sort of registers where people would be re entrants or whatever, left, and they'd ask them, you know, where you're going. Oh, I'm going to international harvesters or building tractors down Weekly or Road as well. ICI, we Rockwear Glass, they're all gone. Yeah. All virtually, you know. Um, and the railways were the other. Yeah. Uh, and again, a lot of the railways have gone. Um, the massive plant works that was there uh, is only a fraction of what it was. It, it was closed first and then reopened after. And it's brought some people back. There's a lot of people that worked at mines. Uh, managed to get jobs in there. Uh, yeah. Not necessarily craftsmen, but, um, you know, they've been used to semi-skilled and they've been used to uh, team working, if you like, because that's how we were, team working. Mm. Yeah. Um, but not building trains like we did. You yeah. know, uh, we assemble everything, don't we? Uh, we're building a new train for East Coast Main Line, but it's been assembled. Uh, up in northeast somewhere, um, at the expense of places I suppose like Derby that was building the trains in more recent times. Everybody, the railways are all run by various countries other than ours, French, German, wherever, have better railway systems than ours and better yeah. <laughs> rolling stock and, uh, and here we are, you know. Yeah private railway system that don't particularly work that well, even though we're quite a small country by comparison yeah, as yeah. well, you know, and makes you wonder why we can't get it right. Yeah. Might be drifting off a bit there, is it? <laughs> no, we tend, we tend to do that. Yeah, yeah. So you, you're obviously married. Yeah. And kids. Yeah. And are they in, in what, are they, what are they going to? And none of them went into mine in this, no. Um, I didn't particularly have a, a thing of, no, you're not going to a pit or mm. attitude or whatever, but I, I did hope that they'd go into, mostly because of, uh, I didn't think it was going to continue. Um, we always, there were always reductions in manpower in my time for, due to technology, mm. never mind anything else. And then obviously there were, there were no vacancies for, for young lads in the village, which were a big effect because of the transfers from other mines that were closing in, in other areas, which, yeah. um, though it's good, it, it's then bad for the local village yeah, because yeah. then you don't get the youth following you into the pit and everybody just travels into the village, you know. Uh, and, you know, and we have experienced that. Um, so they went into different things. Uh, one lad really went into uh, electric uh, motor refurbishment, that type of thing, uh, and still there, and he's worked his way up through that system, and that's a local job. Um, the other one has travelled further and done, they work for John Carr Joinery, which used to be north of Doncaster, um, manufacturing doors and so on, um, and then they decided to close that. He was offered opportunity to go to Sheffield, um, but didn't go, didn't fancy the travelling, I don't think. Um, had a go at uh, windscreen replacements, trained for that, so they finished up with a van running about with that, and then he, were, he moved up into doing lorries and vans, that type of thing, rather than just cars. Did the repair one, what they do, with windscreens, where they drill it out and put resin in and so on. Mm. Um, and then he, he moved on again from there and, uh, and went into uh, National Grid with power lines, pylons, etc. And he's stopped with that. Right. But it's meant travelling all over the country. Yeah. 
Grandchildren, yeah. And three grandchildren. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so everyone's quite local? Yeah. There seem to be a lot of you know, a lot of people that families do seem to hang up to stay around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean the uh, I mean the employment opportunities now at Doncaster really is warehousing. Yeah. You know, I mean there's a massive project nearby us which is the iPort. Um, one thing that the from the closure of the colliery ultimately is that. Uh, and we did fear it at the time that there were. We had a, we had thoughts that there were. It were a prime place, uh, and just needed some road structure pruning in. Um, and there was some kind of master plan that we didn't know about. Um, that, uh, as it was, our estates, UK coal, uh, or our employer by then, were mixed up in and. Uh, we think that turned out to be what the truth was in the end, that there were better opportunities uh, for use of that land rather than the risk of mining. Yeah. And I think it proved the case because it was just on the downhill side thereafter, yeah. right up to the last closure of Atfield and Kellingley, um, where nobody had got the money to invest in mining. And, and of course the other side was the uh, power generation from coal of not following the technology that was available to, to burn it cleanly. Mm. Even though we led it for many years, uh, we didn't invest in it. So we've, we're exposed to whatever, uh, where we are now. Um, not against renewables, but I wouldn't like to have a, a turbine near me, quite frankly. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, they were placed, but I'm not sure it, uh, you know, and of course it's variable how it works. Mm. Um, from it windier spots, but at the end of the day, they only work if wind blows. So yeah. it's not reliable. Uh, you still need base loading, as it's called, and currently it's uh, we're moving towards um, tracks, for example, burns an air percentage now of uh, really anything, uh, wood pulp type materials, still some coal, but obviously it's imported. Um, I remember going around the stockyard at Drax and we had a mixture of all sorts, including coconut shells and really? all sorts. Yeah. Uh, and it's pulled down, obviously, it's burnt, but you you don't get the as good a value from that type of material. In other words, you burn more of it to get the same amount of heat mm. that you get from coal. Uh, and Drax had desulfurisation, etc., fitted to be able to burn cleanly. Um, but that type of material is not a clean fuel either. That yeah. has other issues, you know. Um, of course, gas is a long-running one, but we've expired our um, or the bulk of North Sea gas that we can get out at North Sea, and we're importing it massively to do that. Um, yeah. And the other option is nuclear, of course, which we seem to be, everybody seems to be drifting out to at the moment due to well, right risk of cost. And well, I'm right next to Sizewall. Right. That's all kicking on. My, my life would be severely compromised by a building on a power station. My mm. house is right on the road that the 800 lorries will pass by a day when car parks right, and right. roundabouts being built. And it's a major structural, you know, it's all about building mines oh, and yeah, houses yeah, and stuff. Yeah. You've got to find... Well, there's, pro there's probably more. Of the, there's probably more underground even with the mm. nuclear station because obviously all the the main workings of it are underground, aren't mm. they? And, and all that has yes. to be concreted massively, and as you say, brings thousands of jobs, and then it it falls down then to yeah. small number of jobs actually, yeah. operational station. But yeah, but my but life would be like it kicks off. It was 10, 15 years worth of building, and that's my mm -hmm. that's my kind of <coughs> future, really. Biggest building site in Europe. Right. Quite incredible. Is that on the coast then? Yeah, yeah. Size of quite on the coast. But yeah. they've even got, you know, there's no nuclear waste, there's no cellar field, right? there's no. Processing into yeah. cellar field. Yeah. Yeah. I no mean, trains actually travel through 
Yeah. Uh, people don't always realise, but they transport it to, uh, in, the in these large flasks at night. Yeah. Um, straight up there. I don't know how much they're doing now. It's still a very secretive industry. Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It, uh, so effectively, I mean, it, our industry is gone, and, and the uh, generation of electricity through coal is drifting out. It was now. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure. We've lacked an energy policy for many years mm. in this country, and. Um, there still effectively isn't one, is there? No. Um, I'm not nature. sure it's a good thing when you're good at coast and you're looking at turbines at sea either. <laughs> no. <laughs> not There's a price to pay with all, really. It, it I mean, it, solar it panel yeah, farms. Is, yeah. yeah, yeah. Not seen too many of them, but I have seen them off at railway when I've travelled to London. The, uh, um, seen one or two fields down there and other areas of country. Maybe that's not quite as popular, I don't know. Um, perhaps a bit more uh, small scale, and, and again, uh, panels are getting better, of course, aren't they? But uh, mm. you rely on sunshine, <laughs> essentially. Well, you I have a feel, I mean, you rely, you know. If you've got 300,000 300, houses being built a year, mm. I'm sure that there should be a stipulation that each one should be responsible for this. I mean, if you put energy at source, if you have the ability to create your own energy for your house, like mm. if you've got solar panels and wind turbines and yeah, yeah. Whatever it is, then you would be less reliant on a centralised. Yeah, that's right. System. Yeah. yeah. And it surely is the way forward. To it must be. Yeah. It must be. To decentralise, really. I mean, it's like uh, it's going backwards, really, isn't it? When you think, yes. Like everybody made a fire and cooked on fire, didn't yeah, they? Yeah. If you take it that way, and so it's really reversing that, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you, you've got the materials, but it's just a different way of doing it. You know whether it's through the sun or through the wind or whatever. It, uh, but there's, an, uh, there's a fallback option, but you've got to... It's about storage as well, isn't it? That yeah. It's, it's always been a difficult thing to store electricity, so you can charge batteries up uh, and do it in that manner and use inverters to get it up to the power that you need, you know. Um, so there's a lot of technology to come, I'm sure, and yeah. as you say, you build a new house, well, integrate the panels into the roof like yeah. from onset, you know. The entirely, yeah, I mean, uh, everything can be... I mean, it's, it's a lot better if they're done properly from, rather than just sticking them on top of tiles, you know. I have seen them uh, where they've actually kind of replaced the tiles, so yeah. like internally, you know. Um, a lot much better. And of course they don't hold snow either then either, do they? rather than it slipping off. Yeah. If you're actually giving them. It seems to me we're at a golden age of the moment where we're kind of technology is just, just moving so fast. Yes, it is. That you know, energy is going to be the thing that develops most, really. I suppose that's why it's difficult to make these big plans on power stations and stuff, knowing that 10, 15 years down the line, stuff is um, unimaginable. Stuff is going to have developed. Yeah. Yeah. In the world. Yes, I'm sure. And of course, the demand for energy is different as well, isn't it, than what it was many years ago, you know, it, like large manufacturing, that, you know, have massive uh, requirement are not mm. there, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's lighter, more assembly type uh, things now, mm. even the car plants, whatever, you know, they're not, you know, actually, I mean, most of steel is not from this country, it's... Uh, the panels are brought in and they simply assemble them. Um, but, you know, it creates jobs. Um, but as I said, Doncaster, I mean, it's essentially become a, a warehouse centre. Yeah. Uh, the iPort has a, uh, has a railway feed into it, which is good because obviously it's bringing uh, stuff via rail rather than road. But then it's distributed out because Doncaster's sat on motorways, really. Yeah. Um, and can be spread out from that point. But it, they're not, uh, I don't know, they, I'm not sure you get a lot of job satisfaction from them, the no. type of jobs, because, yeah, okay, you, you're unloading equipment or whatever, you're reloading it back up, it goes out somewhere else, but they, 
There isn't really a satisfaction at the end of it, is there? No. As, as I would see it anyway, I don't know. Never done that, so. <laughs> uh, but I would imagine it's, it's a bit 90 mile an hour and. Uh, I've got the opportunity to. The little distribution centre opens next Thursday, and uh, as a parish council, I've been invited to. Uh, to attend that opening and oh. have a look and have a look around. Um, Middle distribution centre. Yeah, <coughs> it's just behind the uh, very large Amazon building uh, on that site, which is a massive development. You know, it's it's not on the corridor site because we're building houses on the corridor site. But uh, um, five hundred jobs, you know. Wow. Um, so it's interesting to go and look, you know, it's it, it's not technically in our boundary, but it, uh, it's part and parcel of it uh, between Rosington and Lovesall. Um, so it, it affects us. Um, they've opened a store there as well, um, on what was part of the colliery site, um, just over a week or so ago, um, which is out for the for people that's uh, that's living in the new housing in that area, it's given them a supermarket now, which uh, they have to go further into the village to to shop or, or go back the other way to Doncaster, you know. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's good in that respect. Um, we're building 1,200 houses on what was the colliery site uh, in Deal Course and. The colliery tip area um, is destined to be a country park. It's a bit like a lonely landscape at the moment in the yeah. area, <laughs> even where they are starting the next tranche of building. But, uh, It won't go on overnight, but it's a, you know it's a period, and it, it'll depend on demand for hours and how quick the building, won't it? But the, surprisingly, the others have gone pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, even though you're looking across at what was the um, colliery site, you know, nothing to look at in effect. Warehouses to the rear, um, but it hasn't deterred people, you know. Yeah. Quickly. Uh, well, it's where the jobs up. are, isn't it? I suppose. I suppose the people well, yeah, and again, it's where the jobs are. I mean, the ideology is that you should be able to walk to work, cycle to work, catch a bus to work, and all options of not actually using your car. Yeah. You know, um, from a Rosington point of view, because there's not, there's no, we've lost industry from Rosington. We've not gained any. Yeah. You know, smaller businesses, yes, but um, we haven't gained any major manufacturing of any sort or. Uh, since the colliery closure, but also two sewing factories. Two what factories? Sewing factories. Sewing. Yeah, that were uh, trousers, particularly one of them. Um, Coats by Ella, I think the one of the names was. That, uh, but their links were Marks and Spencers in them days, and they decided to go offshore to yeah. get the same things done, um, which led to closures of. Uh, you know, they, these factories. There was also a, uh, a Brook Motors uh, factory as well to produce electric motors, um, all number of things, um, washing machines, etc., etc. Uh, and again, it were, uh, you know, they become skilled jobs, don't they? For, yeah. Uh, I mean, they employ both men and women, of course, uh, but a lot of women that. Because a lot of the wiring on uh, electric motors is quite tricky, and it's mm. women find that to be simpler than men, you know, with larger fingers or whatever, you know, that connecting them up, whatever. My wife did that actually for a time. Really? Yeah, and her sisters. Uh, a lot of people have worked at the uh, electric motor, Brook Motors, as it was. Uh, so that only latterly became a sewing factory. Uh, but there was another sewing factory prior to that, but they've all gone, of course, so um, there's no major employers uh, since the colliery closed.
So did you? So you, your, nat your natural progression from with working into unions and going into once you left the mine was going into politics, was it? Or? Um, not really. No, it uh, it went side by side. Obviously, <laughs> right through. I think from being elected and, and staying in that position. Um, it naturally progressed into other things uh, because obviously we felt we were under threat uh, forever and, and the only way to change that was by going to the people that can make them decisions uh, while it were a nationalised industry. I, you know, MPs, government, um, and that it also continued in privatisation as well because uh, I didn't actually move on to that but uh, after leaving Rosington in 93 um, we went back again in, in 94 and started all over again in effect. Really? Um, under RJB Mining. Um, the mine opened up again? Uh, the what, sorry? The mine opened up again? The mine reopened, yeah. It, were, it had gone from closure in 92, they announced an all number of pits to close in the, you might remember Mr Heseltine uh, announcing in Parliament that X number of pits were closing and so on and then not too long after the they called a moratorium on it while they went through a process then of looking at all these pits to see if they were viable or whatever and to look at changing that decision because um, 20 as I remember it rightly were for immediate closure and then others were, would follow. Uh, our pit became one that they would make available to the private sector right. uh, so it was going to be mothballed um, so the decision it ran from 92 and into 93 um, and then it ceased production in 93 and salvage took place etc and then it was made available to uh, the private sector and uh, RJB Mining were the successful bidder mm. And during that period, we were very much involved uh, with the manpower selection and everything, to be fair. It, were, um, it had a nice feel about it of going back and, yeah. and going back uh, for right reasons and, and, the, and the challenge of making it work, of course. Um, and did it, what, what happened there? What happened in the end? It, um, as I say, uh, we were very much behind with the technology of retreat mining, and we spent uh, a fair bit. We went back to our bad, advanced mining straight away because we knew that worked, but we really needed to up the ante, if you like. Were you involved in this kind of strategy, decision making? Uh, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. The, there hadn't been in British coal days, I'm just told that's how it's going to be and you make mm. it work type of thing, whereas there was this uh, more open uh, discussion, if you like, and uh, of how we could best make it work, mm. because it, it was set out to go a particular way when we first went back. So um, RGB Mining consulted you, or you became... Not, not me directly, no, the, I would say the workforce rather than me. I mean, it, the, though I was still in the secretary, I was a workman. Um, and I, I went on to a different job, but uh, I would have worked with them essentially that uh, that we wanted to make a success of it, you know. Yeah. And uh, so, and we did. RGB we took it over. It. Yep. And obviously got it all recommissioned. Yep. It was a, it was a mine that was kept. I suppose it was kept in good condition. Um, <laughs> I, won't, I won't say in good condition, it was uh, the essential inspections were done what needed to be done, uh, but the, a lot of the equipment had been stripped out, which meant that you couldn't go back in and start mining again. Um, and when we did go back in the March of 94, um, we had to start from scratch, uh, recommissioning everything, um, but essentially we got nothing to mine with, no equipment, whatever. And we had to put a lot of things back in that had been taken, electric cables uh, and so on that uh, that all got you back into mining. So a decision was taken quickly to to get a, a new coal face going, um, but it still took while the November of that year to actually get that uh, or get the equipment ordered, purchased, made, 
uh, and installed on site and and that's I think we just started cutting the coal just prior to Christmas. That's um, still quite quick. I mean, how long, yeah. how long did it take them to get it going? Six months. Um, well, yeah, from the March, well, December then, you, it's fair to say. Jesus. And of course, the manpower were quite small to start with. Um, in fact, even the legislation at the time meant to, you couldn't employ more than 150 people in a private mine. Really? Uh, so it was essentially 50 a shift. Um, God, so they, were, they must have worked. The, the odds were stacked against... I, mean, I don't know what happened in the end. I mean, I presume yeah. the mine went, didn't work. How long did this open for? Uh, well, it, it ultimately closed in uh, 2006 into 2007. Uh, that was its last time, if you like. Um, and yes, it had worked uh, to a point, but we, we did have, you know, it's fair to say we did have problems at Rosington. Um, deep mine, um, so you, you do get a lot of geological issues. Um, but we, we felt we had the right equipment to, to run it. Um, but the pit needed investment, which by then the company hadn't got or weren't prepared to put the money Did they into. have mines in other countries? Um, Africa? No, no. So what was their kind what, of Well, what, what happened essentially with the company is that the uh, they set off with a couple of mines. There was a small private mine up in Cumberland. Uh, we then acquired Clipston, uh, Calverton, Rosington. Were they quite idealist, or was it purely uh, co commercial? Were they quite like a? I think they recognised the what they needed to do initially. From our point of view, what spoiled it is that obviously the privatisation of the coal industry altogether. Um, meant that we, we'd already started that process and the bid for the rest and, and they actually got the bulk of the pits that were available then. Um, examples of uh, the Selby coal field, um, what remained of the Nottinghamshire area, which were all supposed to be the more successful mines. Um, Ashford bid there had never mined properly under British coal. Uh, and never mind properly under RJB either come to that. Which uh, mine, sorry? Ashford Bay. Ashwood. Ashwood Bay in Leicestershire. It was it was a brand new mine that all the investment had gone in through British coal towns um, and reached its uh, point of mining if you like uh, in RJB times but unfortunately uh, they were never able to make it work. So it ultimately it closed and they'd acquired the Selby coal field, the North Knotts coal field, um, which so it were a monster company then in effect um, and Rosington were a little bit left out on its own because it were classed as a, a lease license mine so they didn't own it and they only leased it and uh, put Though there was that massive amount of investment required at first uh, part, I think about £17 million to get that coal face up and running again. Um, that has to be paid back, obviously, uh, but it's a capital uh, project and paid back over a period. Um, so, was that the government lending that or No, no, they didn't. They raised it through uh, whatever, you know. Um, but obviously, then they got, when they acquired the rest of the industry, they acquired all the coal stops. Uh, even at some closed mine sites, uh, etc., and the company was bubbling at that point. Um, but uh, whatever happened, it didn't. Uh, it weren't managed properly, and the Selby mines all closed, which had been uh, massive public investment uh, and should have been going for many more years afterwards and producing coal. Um, for Drax and so on, and, uh, and for power generation. In other words, giving the return back that the investment will put in it in the first place. Uh, and they were all very modern mines. Um, coal only came out of one point via a drift. Um, but it, the, uh, you know, it all failed, ultimately. Um, their last men were actually killing them. 
in Yorkshire anyway, Thorsby had gone just a little bit before it in Nottinghamshire, um, but had all been successful mounds. Mm. Um, that really they weren't going to invest in any further. There had been some uh, European funding came in through the government. There was a, a coal aid scheme where if you, they put so much money into a mine uh, as investment, they would uh, pay a, a percentage of that on top of that to put more money in, you know, to try and make it work actually. Because uh, Rosington had some investment uh, as part of that along with others. And, uh, but again, it, uh, it were only a quick fix. It didn't take you any further forward, you know. And again, by the same token, people's planning to go away from coal. Mm. So people don't want to invest in it either, you know. Um, which ultimately led to the demise altogether. Um, but as I say, we had a suspicion that they wanted to put this link road uh, through that the colliery site, um, we'd actually always aspired to have a, a link into the colliery site to get the lorries in and out that yeah. way rather than uh, coming through the village, you know, and, and people to work as well, of course. Um, so ultimately, uh, it was seen a bit different that uh, they could use the site for something better, which uh, is happening now, i.e. putting houses on it. Yeah. that still left us with no employment prospects. Um, but the iPort has been an exchange for that, if you like. Mm. But that were on, because uh, that were on farmland, and for, you know. But there's the Great Yorkshire Way that runs there that feeds it. Mm. Uh, and we have a, a route into Rosington now, which was uh, probably one of the biggest cul-de-sacs in the village previously. Yeah. Uh, it's a very large village and uh, it were in and out one way. Um, so you've always lived in Rosington? Yeah, yeah, born and bred, wow. <laughs> still there, uh, only moved three times from the original home uh, in total, uh, not planning to move anywhere else. Um, uh, when I finished, uh, I went on some retraining. Um, uh, it were identified that there was a shortage of uh, of gas fitters at the time, um, so I went on a course uh, to train for that, and uh, which was funded. Um, and went okay with that uh, training, uh, passed the training and so on, um, but never really got then chance to put it into a a, a job. Um, because I had some illness myself where uh, I was diagnosed with a tumour on my left kidney and I had to be removed later. Um, so I never really got into that employment and the qualifications mm. have to be renewed. So uh, it never happened by that time. Uh, the age went on my side either, I don't suppose. Um, so I sort of just kind of moved along uh, in what I enjoy doing and being a parish councillor, being a trustee of the mine as well, for still being involved with MUM. Uh, and because I'm obviously I'm past retirement now anyway. Yeah. Um, and enjoying these things that I do do. So it's five minutes remaining. Looking good. Oh, thank you. I could get a few actually. I could get too much wax in my mouth. I'm going to say. <laughs> yes, you would actually. Would you like some more? Actually, I've got a bottle. Yeah, please, yeah. I've got a bottle. I've got a bottle. Off one side, we've got to wait. Here we are so far. <laughs> Alright, yeah. Do you recognise yourself? Yeah. Phew. <laughs> <laughs> it must give you a, a good grip, all this. Uh, Someone mentioned that last time, and I just said my fingers. I'm, I'm actually effectively found in there. In the sculpture, there's still a pathetic kind of piano playing fingers. <laughs> yeah. I shook my hand. There's nothing. There's nothing there. I don't know what. You know. Yeah. Yeah. What's going on? There again, I suppose it's not really 
No, I mean, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's very it, interesting because I literally, you know, perhaps shape. I work in fat like family, you know, you know, do what mad men do. Mm. And then, you know, physical people. And yet, it doesn't seem to translate into muscled hands. Again, below the heat line on the table. I'm going to bulk out the backs. So the, the dates, uh, they're looking for about October term? Well, or is that just we discussed actually, we've been thinking. Thank you. Thank you. Have you got a bottle of water, Lawrence? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, we've got, we've got this project that the, the heads ends in March, and we'll have about 40 heads by March, which is two months later. And then, um, then we'll start on this big stone, thinking where it's going to come from, and I'm going to get it, and how people it's going to be, and it's the best plan. Mm -hmm. Planning consensus, the stuff. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The high street can take the weight, and all sort of stuff. So there's a lot of technical mm. issues mm. to follow through. Are you really identifying somewhere near the clock corner now as it's constant? At the moment, yeah. Yeah, but there's a lot of which I'll please because uh, yeah. that, them other sites that they were mentioning uh, we, weren't, we weren't very happy about, to be yeah. honest with you. But there's um, a lot of services under that, you know, a lot of yeah, cabling, there will be, only, yeah. Coming in gas, yeah. all manner of things that should, you know, sort of yeah. thought about. So there's a lot to think about, a lot of plan. I'm very happy just to doing the project, really. So I'll let the powers of be decide the site. Mm. Remember, the preferred site is the clock corner. Mm -hmm. So, um, let's watch this space. Now, so I think then, once I've done the heads, um, we've got the films to work on, and then we've got the miner to make, the model the miner. And then, the stone gets put in place, and that will be worked out. So I don't think the end, of, I think 2020 will be the Right. 2020 will be the end. I know, I saw, I saw something about it, and I yeah. thought, it sounds a bit, um, but there were, there were a reason behind that, because, um, this year, um, I don't think anything will be put in place at this stage, but um, there's a Yorkshire Miners Memorial Service takes place, right. and uh, it's back to Doncaster this year. Uh, it's held in generally in October, it'll be in St George's or the Minster as it's called now, across the road there. Um, but it, it goes round the mining towns. Right. It, it kicked off in Barnsley. It, uh, Went to Rotherham, Sheffield, Wakefield, Pontefract. Um, then it comes back to Doncaster, mm. essentially, and then it goes starts all over again. Uh, and it is back to Doncaster, as I say. Right, so yeah. uh, when people talk about October, I said, well, it may just coincide, but it's around about yeah. the same time as that. But it, it, it realistically, it won't. Then will it? we've also got. Next year, Doncaster's got a, a kind of what do you call it, um, a year of culture or something happening. All oh, right. Coincide with that as well. Mm -hmm. I did speak to the uh, uh, the dean, I think his class has at uh, the Minster over all day. Oh, yeah. He was actually at the uh, Bentley Memorial Minor Service because there's a big memorial text place every year in November um, at Arxy Cemetery. It's an outdoor service, but there were two incidents there. Of, uh, one, a massive explosion. Uh, we had a lot of loss of life. And then there was a, a paddy accident. Um, and they were both in November. Oh. Um, massively different time scales. But, so they had this remembrance at their uh, memorial there. Um, and the dean actually was present there. And it just had a matter of having a chat after it. Uh, just saying that the Doncaster service is back to, uh, or is back in Doncaster, if you like, this year. Um, and we need to be having a chat about arranging the service, you mm. know. Because I bring the the banners for this, that's relative oh, to right. this area, you know. Nice. Um, and they're all in the church and so on, and they're a particular service for it, you know. So it's, uh, I mean, I go to them wherever they are, but obviously it's, a little bit nicer when it's in yeah. your own town as well. Um, similar to how the galas used to work, because they yeah. used to 
that's what they're doing, they're rotating around what was originally the Gala Towns in effect. Almost went out there, we do Selby Abbey as well. <laughs> uh, so it takes a few years to come back again, you know. Yeah. Um, but the unveiling, I mean, it can be done any time, can't it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, quite a particular event. It's not too far from Mansion House then either, is it? Yeah. <laughs> as a, as a site. I'm sure they'll find somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just it needs to be seen. It, it doesn't yeah. need to be stuck away somewhere. Where, because we've got a, we've got this cultural area of Doncaster that hasn't, you know, where these civic buildings and so on, and the theatre, that hasn't took off yet. There's a long right. way to go with it, and uh, it's okay putting things up there, but there's no traffic mm. in terms of people, you know, other than those that need to go to that area. Yeah. The bus stations at this end, you know, at this end of town near the railways. Um, so people go, don't need to go to that end of town, you know. So somewhere like the Clock Corner would seem mm. to be a good venue. Well, I think the mayor is uh, very passionate about it. They're going cheers, there. yeah, to be fair. Yeah, very passionate. And she actually attends a lot of these services as well. Really? Uh, yeah. She was at Bentley uh, Memorial Service. I, I believe she's a daughter of a miner herself. So. Yes, your father, father yeah. was a miner. So, I, you know, she, I think she understands what the villages were about and the way of life, if you like, you know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's nice to get that recognition. And because the other thing that needs to be part of it as well is, as well as the you know, the sculpture, the, the paving surrounding it yeah. needs to identify the collieries yes. and the rescue centre yeah. station that were on Wheatley Road and uh, the work. I would also like to get the language in it, kind of, all the mining language, so you walk over the language. Yeah, to get well, to yeah, the yeah. I think it would just, uh, initially anyway, at least the surrounding, that you needed to identify the Doncaster Pits, yeah, yeah. you know. Oh, I've been there. And yeah, then whatever else, uh, as you say, there's all sorts of... Because things are, uh, you know, again, technology is different, isn't it? Uh, there's ways of presenting technology differently, that, rather than having same old, same old. Yeah. You know, it's it's like going to museums, you can just go and look at... I know somebody went to Doncaster Museum other day, and I, I know they're going to relocate, of course, but... And he said, well, it's just same old, same old, you know, stuffed animals and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and pottery that's been there forever, and, you know, and there's no new. And, you know, you agree with that, you know, and whereas you can go to these... I remember going to the new museum at Liverpool, a lot of interactive stuff, and, you know, all costs money, of course, but it's easier to change it, isn't it? Yeah. It all requires investment. That's the killer, isn't it? Yeah. Blum and money. Yeah, it is, yeah. But, it, but if you don't do that, then people don't visit it, do they? Yeah. Unless they're visiting the town, you know, and they don't always think about it, do they? I tend to think when we get opportunity to go to places, or as they have done through the Union, if you like, if we've gone to Manchester, if we've gone to Liverpool, so where's museums, you know? Yeah. If we get any time, let's go and have a look at them, you know? Uh, and we've always done that. Uh, Baritown Museum in Liverpool, fantastic, mm. you know?
could have brought my helmet. Could have brought what? <laughs> my helmet. Yeah. <laughs> Still there in garage. Really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll need to look at one. I haven't got my boats now, actually. I mean, it's more modern one, obviously, because, uh, you know, they started issuing more. You needed different helmets because lamps changed over the years as well. Yeah. Um, but they needed to be uh, a more modern style, if you like, rather than some of the older ones that were quite, I uh, think, give you quite the protections, you know. I need to look at that helmet when I make the sculpture, so I might be calling on you. All oh, right. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do here, but it was just something that you, you wanted, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, people just walk out and leave them behind, like, but I thought, oh. Have you got your checks and your... Yeah, yeah, I have, actually, yeah, I've got to... I've got some additional ones as well that uh, we acquired of, uh, uh, for other people that might have wanted them. You know, they were, they were just going to be binned, obviously. Mm. So we, uh, we picked a few up, and I've, uh, I keep giving them away to people. If, uh, it's just uh, I I had two numbers in, uh, in well, sorry, three numbers, and the old time that I were uh, uh, worked at Rosington. Um, and, and partly from from starting, uh, we had a quite a high number. And then when I went for my coal face training at Brodsworth Colliery, effectively you leave your own colliery and sign on the books at Brodsworth, even though it's only for 50 days. You know, and when I went back, I got a totally different number. Because <laughs> I, um, I said they're not. All numbers now are going to be below a thousand, so I've gone from ten fifty three to six three two, um, and I carried that one right through then until I finished with British Coal, and then uh, got a new one with, uh, with RJB and had that to, from start to end. So not a massive amount of numbers, you know, um, but I haven't got a set to vault three. <laughs> So them, them surrounds, and is that part of your project as well, then, or would that be somebody else? Surra well, I, I, yeah, I'm proposing it. Well, the, 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 you mean the labelling and the writing of them? Well, yeah, as I say, the, identifying yes, the core is and so on. Yes, it'd be part of my, um, yeah. be part of my uh, brief to... Has um, somebody given you a list, then, or...? There will be. Or made you I've got, yeah. basically got most of it, but... Um, 
because it's double checking and checking and double checking. It's difficult how far you you take it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you, if if you go out to like Connors River, KB or whatever, do you include enemy? Yeah. Um, because the from a borough point of view, they they're in the borough. Mm. Technically, they worked outside the borough because they're in South Yorkshire, Caulfield, but, right. but the Doncaster Colliers, you know. Um, I think I'll follow advice. Quite, yeah. It, it's for, the, for you guys to decide, I think. The community. Yeah, well, yeah. I know I wrote up now Monday because you. Uh, and, and I hadn't forgot particularly, but uh, somebody said, don't forget the mines rescue station. Yes, we got that. We got the head, um, head miners rescuing. We've done a head of Which were very important, you know. Yeah. There was uh, also Carcroft, which had its workshops yes. and stores. Which you had one of them? We got them in as well. Um, Good to know. Very important because they all uh, purchase in them days. Anyway, all the purchase equipment came uh, from the central stores, mm. and the workshops used to refurbish and um, provide all machinery. <laughs> you are when you get that smell. <laughs> yeah. Eat off it. It was quite funny actually uh, when I got the text message about this on the day. <laughs> that could they get your head done. You know, it, it quite amused me when I read it. Quite what, sorry? It quite amused me when yeah, I read yeah. it, you know. I mean, how else would you put it like? But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I knew it because I knew it from Joe, obviously. And it, uh, and I just, uh, a couple of people had told that, and they, it just amused them as well. <laughs> I said, Are you going? I said, Yeah, of course I'm going, yeah. yeah it's, uh, That's an experience apart from anything else, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it, yeah.
I could go on, but I, could, there's the, I can hear, I can feel the shadows looming over there. There's an ominous presence in the corner of the room. Okay. Give you the white spirit treatment. Take five years off here. <laughs> I have enough trouble when I wait the bathroom and Mrs. has turned the mirror off and it's one of them where it magnifies, you know. Oh, oh God. God. Really? Yeah. Why would well, you, you do that? Well, because they're plucking the right rounds or whatever, aren't oh, they? And then you, you don't turn it back and then you go and go for a shave or whatever. Oh. You, just, you just walk in and look and it... <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Quite frightening. <laughs> yeah. Well, two hours ago, there wasn't a head. Oh, they're all ganging up now, aren't they? Heavies are here. Oh, oh hello. <laughs> you are, I see what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> trying to tell you something. Yeah? yeah? You happy with that one? Definitely. Thank God for that. <laughs> Very nice head to do. Feels, feels good from that angle. It's probably when you've got wisps of hair. Yeah, yeah. It all look like Dr. Death. I didn't think I'd have had any by now, actually, because yeah. uh, it's always been thin for, forever. You know, but it can sympathise that. <laughs> I yeah, can't. You can make yours look good. If I did that, it'd just be like, I need to keep it all gone, wouldn't I? You know what I mean? It, I'm almost there now. I'm almost it seems to be a big thing nowadays, though, doesn't it? it <laughs> younger people. You've still got hair on you. You salt it, though. <laughs> Not everybody salts it, do they? Yeah. yeah. Okay, you are now immortalised. You are now part of social history, I say. Mm -hmm. I love it when you don't need the mind to show the camera again. <laughs> 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 oh, <that's rapid>. Twins. <laughs> <laughs> 